to a chat. Just comment on that. Yeah, the, the problem with that argument is we, we take the past when, as Chris said, we've waited too long to enact extended benefits and act as though that should be the standard of when we do it. We did it too late every time in the past. We had an opportunity to do it on time this time, and we passed on that opportunity. And the argument about the 5% unemployment rate, people say, well, we never did it until it was 5.5%. Uh, I think it's a good argument that the unemployment rate is not the best indicator of what's happening in the labor market. You mentioned some statistics, the fact that the long-term unemployed, this, the un long-term unemployment rate is twice as high as it was at going into the last recession. Okay, now that needs to be emphasized, right? Yes. In other words, the, the, the number of long-term unemployed... That's people unemployed in, more than 26 more weeks. More than 26 weeks, who've exhausted their benefits, is much higher than during the last recession. So you would think, even though the national unemployment rate isn't as high as it was then, the number of long-term unemployed is much higher, therefore, therefore, there should be extension of the program. Yes, there's, there's, there's more hurt right now. And the second piece is the economic piece, which is long-term uninsurance, uh, extending long-term uh, uninsurance benefits is uh, one of the best stimulus packages we have. It gets into the hands of people who are going to spend it right away, and that's what you want to do with stimulus. It's, it's targeted. It, it, it's not something that adds permanently to the long-term budget deficit because when the unemployment rate comes down, you trigger off of extended benefits. And so it satisfies the three T's that we heard in the stimulus debate, timely, targeted, and, and temporary. And we, we passed on an opportunity to do it when we should have. We're going to have a hearing here in the House uh, in a few days on this issue, and we hope that programs and discussions like this will keep the issue alive. You work for, for such a distinguished, wonderful organization that deals with a lot of issues relating to the impact of policies. There's a lot of hurt in this country, is there not? There is. The, uh, to come back to the unemployment rate, um, that doesn't tell the whole story about the fact that there are people who have decided they don't want to look for work anymore because they're too discouraged. So they're not counted. In, they're, not, when, they're not counted, that's when right. When you figure out the unemployment rate. Yeah, I mean, last, last month the unemployment rate actually went down a tenth of a point from 4.9 to 4.8, but the reason that happened was because the number of people left the labor force, not because there were more jobs created. There's a half a million people left the labor yeah. force. And, and, and the center works on issues like the use of food stamps. Food stamps. The problems with health insurance. Yes. We have this mortgage crisis, people losing their homes. You would think this would be, I won't use the word ideal, but this would be the urgent moment to extend unemployment comp benefits. Yeah. I mean, we kept hearing about how great this recovery was from the president, and we know from the statistics that the average person didn't do very well, even when the economy started to grow after the last recession. And now, if we're, if we're in fact, uh, we're certainly in an economic slump, whether we'll formally satisfy the criteria for a recession, the fact is that that's not a situation when the average family is going to be doing well. And to, to add on the burden of higher unemployment and not getting benefits is not helpful. But as you mentioned about the mortgage crisis, Congressman, um, there's research that has shown that uh, if unemployed workers receive benefits, they are half as likely to lose their homes. So in fact, although there hasn't been much discussion of it, this is part of the answer to the mortgage crisis, to the foreclosure crisis, is to extend benefits so people can continue to pay their mortgage, they can negotiate something with their bank, uh, you know, it gives them a little bit more of a cushion and it will help uh, preserve home ownership for people. And, and let's talk a moment about this issue of, 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 of stimulus because we passed a stimulus package. As I said, some of us wanted unemployment comp extension in it. Uh, President Bush said, if it's in it, we'll veto it. So we weren't able to, to include it. We're going to take another uh, bite at, uh, at the effort. Um, but let's talk for a moment about, about the stimulus so that, that we get across the message. Unemployment compensation checks in most states, including Michigan, are today basically mailed out, are they not? They are. They, they come fast. Mm -hmm. They come very they fast. They come fast. Mm -hmm. It used to be people went to the offices. Right. They've closed many of the offices, right. and so they do it by mail. And so I think the estimate is that unemployment compensation checks would arrive probably within a month. 
and the estimate is for the 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 credits to work in the, the first stimulus package, it will be three months. I, Correct. I, we all just got our notices, yeah. right, right, whether we're eligible yes. or not. And it's going to be three months. And so if we're really talking about helping those who are hurting through no fault of their own, extending unemployment compensation is an ideal necessary instrument, isn't it? Yes, and we, we, did, uh, we did one important thing in the stimulus package, which was to, to ex that the president was initially reluctant to do, and that was to extend the, the rebates to, to, to the elderly and to, to workers who didn't pay enough income taxes to qualify. <coughs> but we left paid out all kinds of taxes. Right, so right exactly. They, they, that, that's right. So, uh, a huge percentage of people in this country pay much more in payroll taxes than they do in income taxes then. And they are tax and so we were able to, to expand right. the program there. Right. But we left out three other important things. Unemployment insurance right at the top of the list. Food stamps. Food stamps is another really fast-acting stimulus program. And it goes to people who are not taxpayers and might not get this rebate uh, because in this period, to people who um, are, are not might not get unemployment insurance because the of flaws in the, our permanent unemployment system that they don't, they, they, even though they might have done some work. They didn't work enough quarters recently enough to qualify. And the third thing that some people overlook is state and local governments, they're required to balance their budgets. And in a recession, their, their tax revenues go down, their needs go up, and they cut, they cut benefits from Medicaid, other things that help the people that are really hurting. And so uh, we have a lot of things that were good stimulus that we left out. And we can do it again. We can do it in the right, right, right time this time. The case is so clear, I think. <laughs> you know, it is. Every case in Washington isn't clear. No, this is a no-brainer. There are, there, are, there are often two sides uh, to, to, to an argument, sometimes three sides, sometimes four sides. I don't see the side to this. Uh, again, people unemployed through no fault of their own, looking for work. And also, I think we should remember the family impact. Uh, as I mentioned, I called uh, the electrical workers, and a lot of them are now traveling. The impact on the family, having to, the, the, the breadwinner, or one of the two breadwinners, having to leave Michigan, leave the home, to find work someplace else. They can't just pick up the whole family and move. They pick themselves up and go elsewhere. So I hope uh, people who, who are listening to us will join in and make their, their uh, voices heard. Your voices have been eloquent, and I hope um, we're going to have some hearings, and I hope that your expertise will be called on and your organizations will continue to raise your voices because I think maybe one out of a hundred have ever heard of either of your organizations, but you don't care because you believe in what you're doing and you know that you impact people even if you may be unknown to them. So uh, keep it up. Let's not give up. We're doing that. <laughs> Pour it on. Yep. And thank you for coming.